What's up guys? James here. It's uh, like 9.39. Oh, you can see it too. 9.47 a.m. in the morning here. I've got my uh, my iced latte I'm drinking, I'm trying to get some energy going. <laughs> um, I wanted to do a quick video tutorial on Photoshop this morning. I have this image here that I just used for um, On One Inspiration's blog series. You can go watch it. I'll, I'll drop the link here. Um, I went through how I blended a background image and a foreground image together inside of On One Photo 10. I finished up the image, I posted it, and then I got looking at it uh, yesterday and I started realizing that it wasn't exactly in a finished state or it wasn't where I wanted it to be. And I think this happens a lot. It happens to me every now and again where I think I'm done with an image and then I go back and look at it after I've you know posted it and there's maybe a few more tweaks that I'd like to do to it. So here's what I did. This is the finished image, uh, as you can see here. And here's what it looked like after I was done with it. Done with it. Um, turn that off, and here we go. And I started looking at it, and I just started thinking, like, man, it, it looks a little bit washed out. It could use a little contrast boost. And then I decided that I wanted to get rid of this guy here because he's kind of blurred. This wave is crashing in to this place called Queen's Bath in Kauai. And this guy's standing here. He was just about to jump in before this wave hit. And this guy is scrambling to get out of this little this little tide pool uh, before this wave obliterates him and washes him out to sea, basically. So um, why don't we just delete these? And then we'll start over from the beginning. And I'll show you pretty much what I did. So. Okay, here's the main reason I wanted to create this video. I wanna show you how I removed this guy. Okay, so um, there's a lot of ways you can do this uh, inside of Photoshop, which is true of anything you wanna do in Photoshop. There's usually multiple ways to do it. The, the kind of roundabout way would be to grab like a clone stamp and just kind of painstakingly go along the edge of this rock and uh, you couldn't do like a, um, you know, like a lasso tool and then do like continent or fill because you're dealing with the water and then this hard edge against the rocks and you're just not going to maintain that edge. It might try to fill it in with some other parts of rocks, but it's not going to look right. Um, you know, we can, I can show you really quickly. So command J to duplicate that layer so that we're not ever, um, playing with that background layer grab a lasso tool, just draw around here. And then you're gonna hit like shift delete, content aware, okay. And you can see that it, it didn't do a terrible job, but we have like a foot here from this guy and we're not keeping that edge. And you can see here that this edge is an exact clone of this edge. So it kind of just took this and put it over here. And now we have duplicated pixels and it just isn't what we wanted. If I hit Command Z here, you'll see what's going on here. Okay, so no, we don't want to, we don't want that. Here's what I like to do in these situations. So I'm gonna go up here and grab the magic wand. Okay, if you don't have that, it might you know look like that. Just click, hold down, and choose a quick selection tool. Um, and sorry, I, I called it the magic wand, but it's the quick selection tool. You can also just hit W for the shortcut there. I'll make it a little bit bigger here. We want to make sure that we're painting uh, in. So you want to make sure that you have the plus mark in there instead of the, uh, the minus sign. And then we're just going to draw along these rocks here. And then I'm going to go out a little bit further. The reason why this quick selection tool is really good is because it will sense these edges and it'll create kind of a, a mask along that edge. And you can see right here that it kind of messed up a little bit, which isn't a huge deal, but what we can do is just make this smaller. We'll zoom in a little bit here. Okay, hold down the shift key and that'll switch to the minus sign. And then we'll just draw out along the edge there. And that's gonna be pretty close. Get rid of that. All right, and then 
let's go ahead and dip into the skin there where it looks like it messed up a little bit. Okay, right there. All right, so there we have that. And then I'm gonna go down here and just click the mask tool. And we don't really see anything yet, but if I option click the mask, this is what we ended up with. And another thing I'll probably do here is grab my brush tool. Uh, come on, get smaller. There we go. Make it a little bit softer. Paint with 100% opacity. And then I'm just gonna bring the edges out here. So if you're lost, which you very well might be, just bear with me here, okay? And I'll show you what I'm doing here. Then I'll bring it out a little bit like that. Okay, the reason that I'm creating that mask is so that I can protect the edges here when I go to use the, uh, the clone stamp. So now we can grab the clone stamp by hitting S, or it's over here on the toolbar. Okay, make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna grab from right here. So with the clone stamp, you hold down the um, option or the alt key, and then you just choose a place to sample from. So I'll just sample from right here, and then I'll just go into the water. Uh, oops, okay, so the reason nothing was happening, excuse me, was because the mask was selected and not the image. So you have to go over here to the right, select the image. Try that again, and now we'll just start drawing with 100% opacity. Right along here. Start over. Why, what's going on here? Okay, sorry guys, it's too early. I'm still drinking my coffee. Uh, when I started playing with the, the mask here, I messed it up by trying to do the clone stamp on it. So let's circle back to zero and start over. Okay, go back here, hold down the option key, and now we are working. All right. And as you can see here, as I draw, or as I uh, you know use the paintbrush with the clone stamp tool, we can see that I can just draw right over the edge of the rocks there and nothing happens. Why isn't anything happening? Well, that's because we have this mask that is protecting it. Now, what's actually happening is that I'm drawing well into those rocks, but with a mask over it, black conceals while white reveals. So black is concealing this layer, okay? If I turn off this mask, this is what I'm actually doing. I'm actually drawing, uh, using the clone stamp and drawing right over those rocks. But this mask, is protecting this image along the edges of those rocks and showing us what's underneath it, which is this base layer. So I hope that makes sense. It's a, it's a little bit confusing, but uh, you know, once you play around with it a little bit, it starts to make sense. Um, okay, so this is before and after. Now you can get really picky, go down here and see that there's a little bit um, of a messed up edge here. And if you wanna fix that, what you'll do is just, you know, be done with this layer. We can, you know, double click this and call it um, uh, uh, local, because that guy was a local. And then uh, we'll do shift option command E to merge all those layers together. And now we'll do uh, brush, or no, we'll, we'll still use the clone stamp. Okay, and you can do either one. You can either draw uh, or clone from the rocks or you can clone from the water. I'll just grab the water because that's probably the easier. And then you just go along the edge here. If that's too hard of an edge, you can just drag up, make it softer there. And just go along just like that. And that'll fix that right up. There's also a little bit of chromatic aberration in that rock there, so it's good to get rid of that. Same here, you can just paint over it, and give us a better edge there. All right, so just like that, and that's fixed. Okay, so we have that guy all taken care of. He's not in the image anymore. And now we just wanna add a little bit of a contrast punch to the image. So to do that, I'll grab a levels adjustment layer 
And this is one of my most common adjustment layers that I use in Photoshop. It's usually either the levels or a curves layer. And what I like to do with the levels is I'll usually just start by grabbing the midtones and dragging them over. And look what that's doing to the image. It's adding a nice little um, contrast boost to the rocks and it's making the colors in the sky kind of just pop a little bit. Okay, so get it to where I want it, maybe a little bit further than I want it. And then I'll hit Command or Control I to invert that mask. So now we have a black mask, which is concealing that entire adjustment that we just made. So now if I want to bring that adjustment in to the image, I'll grab a paintbrush, make sure I'm painting on that mask with white, and I'll probably bring it in at like 70%. So I'll hit, you know, seven right there, and then I'll just paint in the sky, just like that. All along the top there. And since I'm painting with 70% opacity, it'll take you know a couple strokes to bring in the full effect. But I like doing that as compared to like 50% uh, or 100% just because um, with, when you do 100%, it just puts it all in there at once. And I kind of like to gradually bring it in. And then as I go below the horizon, I'll dip down to like 30 or 40% and then just create kind of like a, a good gradient there like that okay and then with that same 30 you know percent brush I'll bring it into the rocks here this is all just manual no luminosity or anything like that just bring in a little bit of darkness and then I'll go down to 20 percent and bring a little bit over the water here too in the foreground okay so this is what my mask looks like it's a little bit messy and what I'll usually do is double click the mask and then take my feather and bring it way up to kind of just blur those edges. And now if we go back to the image, this is our before and after. All right, so here's our before, which is actually after on one. And then we use that mask to take care of that guy, he's gone. And then we fix the edge up a little bit, which you can't really see from this uh, zoomed out perspective. And then we added a little bit of contrast boost. So just a few quick adjustments to get the image where I really wanted it to end up. So um, hope you learned a few tricks here. And if you have any questions, let me know. All right, see you guys.